one. All right, Malkiel, you're on. I greet the family in the Ngoni word of wholeness and oneness in Ubuntu. Ubuntu to the family. Um, I want to preference this by first uh, thanking um, Akita and Nasit Aharon for allowing me to add to this wonderful, wonderful star knowledge. And I want to also uh, let the family know that um, what I'm bringing is not to verify what has already been presented. I'm just a wheel, which means I'm going to show the consistency, continuity, and connectivity of the information that has already been presented to us. Okay. So um, I'll start Welcome with. <laughs> Buckle in, brother. Buckle in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um uh let me let me let me again uh expand on what has been already given on the feminine and masculine energies. The sisters, we all know the sisters represent the feminine energy. They are first. They are primary. You know, as we've been taught with these star classes. But also, when you talk about the feminine energy, you're talking about the two elements, two of the four elements. You're talking about the air and the water. Those represent feminine energies. So again, we're still talking about the sisters. Also, the geometric shape of the feminine energy is the circle or the curve or the arc. Now, you need to write that down, circle, curve or arc, because all this is going to come into play towards the end. Yes. Now the brothers, now, now the brothers again, the brothers represent the fire and the earth, the physical. The fire represents the mental, the earth represents the physical. And the geometric shape for the masculine energy is a straight line or an angle. Uh-huh. Straight line or angle. Okay, Machiel, uh, I need you to repeat that. I need you to repeat that, Machiel, for the taking notes. For uh, you want me to start with the sisters or the brothers? The sisters. Okay. The sisters again represent the feminine energy on the physical plane. There are two, there are two elements of the four elements. Their two elements are the air and the water. Their geometric shape that identifies the feminine energy is the circle, the curve, or arc. For the brothers, they represent the fire and earth. The fire represents the mental, the earth represents the physical. The brothers represent the physical plane. Again, the sisters represent the spirit or the cosmic plane. 
the geometric shape for the brother that identifies the, the masculine energy is a straight line or an angle. Good. Okay, moving forward. Akitai has been sharing with us the last couple of days about the star knowledge, star people, and a fire clan. Also, um, he brought about the abundance and resurrection that those two are one. Now, within that, he, he had made mention about the pyramid and this class, uh, well, as you're gonna see, from looking up the word pyramid came a whole class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, no the etymology, <laughs> yes. <laughs> And, and 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 I thought it tied in very very perfectly with, with what has been already revealed. Um, the etymology word for pyramid, the definition is pyre, p y r e, which is a noun. In the 1650s, from the Latin, pyra or pyra and directly from the greek pyra or pyra and the first definition is funeral pyre second definition is altar for sacrifice uh -huh. and the third which which caught which caught my eye was any place where fire is kindled. And again, Itai uh, has been talking about the fire. So with, um, with the understanding of the pyramid and the fire, I said, okay, it has been talking about a temple. Yes, sir. And uh, something within that temple, that's where the word mid comes in. So we have pyramid. So mid means middle, center, or balance. And when I and, and when I connect that, it took me to the rare man. Because it's going to take a rare man to confront this aberrant man. And <laughs> that that war is real. So we're gonna we're gonna look at this rare man. We're gonna identify this rare man, and we're gonna identify the aberrant man. Let me let me let me let me also um, inject here something something that that is very critical to understand what um, Akita has been sharing. He brought um, Ank of Ank Ank Nakansu and the revelation and the apotheosis right. of the son of man right. in the last days. We're going, to, we, we're going to identify the son of man in the simulated reality and we're going to identify the son of man in the organic reality excellent Malkia. because again this is what the definition of the pyramid led me to so um we're going to go to isaiah the 13th chapter. It 
if uh, if there are if there are any sisters on the line, I want you to hold on because right now I'm talking to the brothers. So I want I want to go to Isaiah the 13th chapter, starting with the ninth verse. We're going to go from verse nine to twelve. Uh huh. I'm reading, I'll be reading from the Schofield 1967 edition. Okay. And it reads, Behold the day of the Lord coming. Brethren, that day is now. Okay. Continue on. Crueleth, both with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate and he shall destroy the sinners of it. So what is this it? This it is the simulated reality that we're in. Okay. Verse 10. Come on now. For the stars of heaven <laughs> And the constellations thereof shall not give their light. Now, again, here we are talking star knowledge. Yes, sir. This is this this is this is what this is all about, star knowledge. And we read that the stars of the heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light, and the sun shall be darkened. In the going forth, and the moon shall not cause its light to shine. Brethren, that's us. When we angry, our light ain't shining. It's dark. We we are going to be <laughs> that dark angel to bring down the simulated reality. Okay. Moving forward. Now, uh, my verse dear, 11. Yes. Just just a side note. I just looked up that word constellations. Uh-huh. And it's the word Cassiel in Hebrew. Okay. And it refers to mm -hmm. the constellation Orion. See? <laughs> see and 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 again it uh just, just just like you shared with me you know you you in my class but but this this shows again again family this shows the consistency right the continuity there you and go and the connectivity of everything that's been given to us that's right so go ahead um, on, brother Verse, verse 11, here I'm going to show you dualism in, in the organic reality. There's a difference. Dualism in the simulated reality divides and separates. Dualism yeah. in yeah. organic reality is oneness. Absolutely. Wholeness. Yes. A relation, a relationship with one another. Partnership. The same. So, reading verse 11. And I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their iniquity. So we as Lord say, I will punish this world. So, so we know we're talking about the simulated reality. Okay. But we can't, we can't punish that simulated reality without doing this. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. In order for us 
to bring that world down, brethren. We got to. Lost audio. Malkia, we lost the audio. Oh, did you? Yeah. Uh, you were explaining what we needed to do. Did you read, I mean, did, did you hear um, me read verse 11? Yes, yes. Yeah, we heard that. We heard that, but when you okay. got to explain what we needed to do. Okay, I got you. Repeat I got that. you. We lost I'm a, I'm a, on that. Okay. I'm going to go back. Reading verse 11 again. And I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their iniquity. Now, again, we know that's a simulated reality. But before we can even challenge that simulated reality externally, we got to challenge that simulated reality eternally and this is what we have to do reading on and i will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease we got to do that within us <laughs> and i will lay and i will lay and i will lay lower i will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible again all these things that have been shared in this in this particular scripture was within us the simulated reality the haughtiness the ego that's the right. proud that's right because if 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 we don't if we don't remove that we cannot punish the external simulated reality moving forward verse 12 and I would make a man. Let me stop there. Put the brakes on. I just read in Isaiah, the 13th chapter, I will make a man. I thought man was made in the Genesis. So who is being made here? There's a transitioning happening that's what we are experiencing in real time right now we will make a man rare than fine gold even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. now this this man that is going to challenge disseminate reality is going to be coming with wealth. That's what Ophir represents. Nasi already uh, identify where that wealth is with the queen, queen of England. But but as we as we go further, we're going to see all this ties in beautifully. So, so let's go to Genesis. 10th chapter. We're going to see, and again, see how everything fits. Genesis, the 10th chapter, verses 25 through 29. And it reads, and unto Eber, see again, there's Eber. This is what Akitai brought to us way back about Eber. So there, there's that connection that we have. Okay. And Eber were born two sons. There's those two sons that e that That's Akitai right. been talking about. That's right. The name of the one was Pele, for in his day was the earth divided. 
simulate reality. Yes. Also, the Eastern Hemisphere and the Western Hemisphere. There we go. For in his days was the earth divided, and his brothers named were Joktan, and Joktan begot Alamdad, and she left, and Hazar Mepheth, and Jera, and Hador Am, and Uzal, or Uzal, and Dikla, and Opel, Opel, and Abi, Al, Al, and Sheba, and Ophir, uh -huh. and Havilah, and Jabab. All these were the sons of Joktan. Now, the footnote to Ophir reads again i'm i'm reading from the footnote from scopefield bible ophir at the southern end of the red sea was famous for its gold so again we're talking about this wealth that we are going to inherit so now we're going to identify who that rare man is and who that son of man is, S O N, in the simulated reality. And at the same time, we're going to identify the son of man, S U N, in the organic reality. Let's go to First King. What chapter, brother? First Kings, chapter nine, verses twenty-six, twenty-eight. Twenty-six through twenty-eight, or twenty-six and twenty-eight. Twenty-six through twenty-eight. Okay, good. Because again, we're going we're going to identify this son of man. In the simulated reality. And King Solomon, that's who it is, made a navy, made a navy of ships. And again, with, with the earth divided, you, you see, I'm quite sure he was going to and fro. Uh -huh. And King Solomon. Made a navy of made a navy of ships in Ezion Geber, which is beside Elah, on the shore of the Red Sea, and in the land of Edom. And Hiram sent in the navy his servants, seamen, who had knowledge of the sea, star knowledge. You don't navigate the seas without the stars. Okay. Star knowledge with the servants of Solomon. And they came to Ophir and fetch from their gold 420 talents and brought in and brought it to Solomon. Now I don't know how much 420 talents is. But I know it's a large uh, <laughs> and and I know I know four four times two is eight, and eight represents a lot of wealth. Uh Al <laughs> Yes, sir. And I'm 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 addressing this to um the the you know everyone that's on. They I, there was something I didn't understand that happened that people were talking about 420 uh, a couple of days ago on oh, I got you. April the 20th. I'll explain. 
What, what, what does that mean? Go ahead. See, 420 is um, a code word or code number for marijuana. Okay. And and actually, that 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 if, again, hear me and follow me. Marijuana or hemp that contains THC. Yes. Is what 420 is all about. Now, THC is in all of us. Also because everybody on this call is a teacher, a healer, and a counselor. If, if you're not those things on this call, you don't need to be on this call. Okay. So that 420 is, 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 is uh, a cold word for, you know, marijuana. You know, okay. which, which again, which again is spreading. You know, like like wildfire. Absolutely. So, um, I'm gonna read verse 28. And they came to Ophir, and fetched them their gold, 420 talents, and brought it into King, brought it into King Solomon. Now let's go to verse. Excuse me, let's go to chapter 10 in First Kings, verse 6. Through 12. We're gonna do that first. We're gonna go through 6 through 12, 23 through 24, 23 and 24. And then we're gonna go back to 13. Verse 13. Now, sisters, this is where you come in. And she, there she is, that feminine energy. And she said unto the king, it was true, it was a true report that I heard in my own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. See, brethren, now, again, we have to act. We have to now manifest with this star knowledge, okay. which is our wisdom. Verse 7. Howbeit, I believe not the words unto I came, and my eyes, and my eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told to me. Now again, understanding this, this star knowledge and understanding how things manifest within yourself, what wasn't told to us? What, what wasn't told to me? What wasn't told to you in this simulated, in that simulated reality? Okay. What wasn't told to us was that we had wisdom, we had prosperity, we had exceeded the fame which I heard. We didn't know that we were wealthy. We didn't know that we was wise. We didn't know that we would be large because the assimilated reality did not Reveal those things to us. It wasn't until we came into the organic reality uh -huh. that we had these things now. Verse 9, I mean, excuse me, verse 8. Check this out, Itai. Yeah. Happy are the man. Oh, ain't that. Happy unk, happy are the men 
That's happy on, brethren. Happy are thee, thy servants, who stand continually before thee and who hear thy wisdom. See, that's happy on, and that wisdom is the star knowledge. Okay. Itai. Uh huh. Show us the picture of happy on. That you showed us. Which which one did you want to see, brother? Uh, the picture of the happy young. I think you had a um a series of them with with the with the bull okay. and the serpent on top. All right, hold on one second. Right here. Uh, you, sir, you, sir, and Hoppy. Yes. Okay. But, right. but, 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 um, you also had a picture. Okay, yeah, I see it. I see it. I see it. Happy on. Right. You had, you have the highlight spell happy on. Right. Right here. Yes. And see, and, and, and it represents the bull. And the serpent with the circle correct on his head, right? Right, okay. We're going to, again, we're going to identify what that bull represents in the or the bull. Well, the happy aunt picture represents in this organic reality, okay? So, um, moving on, verse not verse nine. Blessed be the Lord thy God who delight in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel. Now again, who are we talking about? Blessed be the Lord thy God in thee. The God in you. And what is the name of the seventh chakra. That's the that's the crown chakra, the crown chakra. Okay. Don't don't the crown and the throne aren't those synonymous? Okay. So so again, that throne is you. So now it's going to read blessed is the Lord thy God who delighted in thee to see that the throne, instead of the throne of Israel, the throne is real. We okay. got to see that. That throne is real within us. Okay. Move, moving forward. Because the Lord loveth Israel forever. Now, brethren, I want you to put your name where, where it says Lord. And then I want you to read that to yourself. And I'm going to read it with my name. Because Michael love, because Michael's love is real forever. <laughs> we got to make this personal, brethren. Therefore, may he, the king. So brethren, read, starting with because, put your, put your name in there, and then stop where it says king. Because Machiel, love is real forever. Therefore, may he the king. See, brethren, you just anointed yourself. <laughs> king. You the king. You anoint. God. 
be known. Therefore, may he be king to execute justice and righteousness. That's how we're going to bring that simulated world externally. That's how we're going to bring it down. But it first has to start from within. Okay. Feeding on. Again, the power of the feminine energy, the sisters. Brethren, when we do these things that have been given to us, this is what we will receive from the feminine energy. Verse 10, and she gave the king an hundred and twenty talents of gold and of spices, very great store and precious stones. There came no more such abundance of spices to these which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. That was in the that was in the simulated reality. In the organic reality, we're gonna receive our wealth from the Queen of England. Okay. Just as we've been told here through Akita and Nasi Aharon. Verse 11. And the navy of Haram that bore gold from Ophir, brought in from Ophir a great plenty of almond trees and precious stones. Almond trees is sandalwood. Okay. And the king made and the king made the almond trees, made the almond trees pillars for the house of the Lord and for the king's house. Harps also and salt trees of singers. There came no such almond trees, nor were even unto this day. Jump to verse 23 and 24. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth in riches and for wisdom. Brethren, if King Solomon got all this in the simulated reality, what you think we're going to get in this organic reality? Okay. Verse 24, and all the earth consulted Solomon to hear the wisdom which God had put in his heart. That's going to be key because Etai talked about fire, you're talking about plasma. You talked about uh, frequencies, electricity. All those are tied to the physical heart, which I'm gonna I'm gonna share. But now we're gonna see that King Solomon possess star knowledge. We're going to go to First Kings, eleventh chapter, Etai. Okay. Verse three. Now we're going to see. We're going to see. He possessed the eleventh chapter. Yeah, eleventh chapter, verse three, and we're going to see, he possessed star knowledge. And it reads, and he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. He had, now, first of all, what did Etai share with us yesterday about the sex? and about the amber and the feather right how they attract 
This is this is this is what Solomon did. Okay. Because of his star knowledge. Now, if you look at seven, seven, and again talking about seven, seven hundred, seven hundred wise, he was connected and understood the constellation of Pleiades, the seven stars. And the, and the 300 wives were Orion, Orion's belt. He had star knowledge. Okay. So now we're going to break down the word Solomon. And with the Etymology with the etymology dictionary. Saul or soul is identified with the sun. The sun personified. Mon, M O N. I got this from I got this from the Webster Dictionary online. Okay. Mon, M O N, was a dialectal, chiefly British variant of man. So you have son. You have man, uh -huh. and there, there it is, son of man. That's the son of man in the organic, I mean, excuse me, in the simulated reality. Now we're going to, we're going to see and identify the son of man in the organic reality so i'm about to close now the sisters have to understand their power they have to understand that they are first they they have to understand that their attack is different from our attack Okay. That aberrant man understood that the sister were the spiritual element. So they couldn't they couldn't kill and lock the sister up like that because she's spirit. They they had to they they, they had to attack her mentally. That's why when you read in the Willie Lynch letter. That's right. And they, uh, you know, pull the brother apart in front of her. They had to psychologically attack her, which is the mental, which is the masculine. Sisters. That's right. That's not you. You are the heir. You are the water, which is the emotional and the spirit. So they they had to put that masculine energy in you, the mental, by, by attacking the mental aspect. But as we as we are now. As we are now know, knowing on this call that we on this call are the organic reality. We have to understand that. We are the beginning of the physical organic reality. 
So let's go, let's go back to Isaiah. The fourth chapter. Verses one through three. Now, when we read this in the kingdom, us brothers, we was all hyped. We was all we, we was all zealed up. <laughs> not, not knowing, not knowing we, we was foolish. <laughs> this is excellent, Malkia. Go ahead on. Now, again, like I said, I'm reading, I'm reading from the scope. I'm reading from the scope field. So the the caption reads a vision of the coming kingdom, the vision of the organic reality. Start with verse one, reading one through one through three, verse one. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. See, we already tried, we see it in work. The seven women here, brethren, again, is this is the seven pleiades, which corresponds to the seven chakras of the body. Uh -huh. And in that day, the seven chakras of the body shall take hold of one man. Reading on, saying, we will eat our own bread and wear mm -hmm. our own apparel only let us be called by thy name our own apparel our own food we're going to create our own reality once we are aligned with the seven chakras of the body which are aligned with the stars of pleiades the sisters or the, or the wives. Uh huh. Verse two. Wow. In that day, in that day, shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and splendid for those who escape from Israel. They say in that day, the branch of the Lord. Well, the branch are the things that we're gonna manifest in this organic reality. Those things are gonna be beautiful, glorious for the planet, gonna be splendid. But we got to escape Israel. We got to escape the box. We got to escape that simulated reality that's within us. If you don't escape that simulated reality within yourself, you will never escape the simulated reality in the physical. Verse three, and it shall come to pass. Now, remember now, this is showing us that we are going to create this organic reality. But where? Verse three, and it shall come to pass that he who was left in Zion, brethren, sisters, when you read a map, where is West located at? Uh, to the left. To the left. To the left. And it shall come to pass that he who is left in Zion to the left, and he, to the west, huh? yes, to the west, <laughs> mm -hmm. and he who remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. Well, we know holy is holy, right. So, um, this is showing us again. This, this, this is showing us, brethren, that we have the star knowledge. 
we are the star people. We are that fire clan that Etai is bringing forth to us. We are that fire clan. So, Dang, definitely. Again, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting to the end. This is, this is truly, and now, now this is really going to confirm what everything has been said because, again, we have to understand that us as brethren, we manifest in the physical world. The sisters bring that energy that allow us to. Okay. Without the sister, we don't manifest as we see and as we already saw. So I want to close this by sharing the revelation I had. And, and again, is is this is this revelation is just is is, is going to be the um uh, the small version because this right here in itself is, is a big old class. And that's the revelation of the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, okay, right. Because see, in that simulated reality, the Ark of the Covenant was having us chase, chasing a box. Ain't that something? In that simulated reality, we we identify the simulate reality as a box. That's right. The Ark of the government and and the Ark of a government, they got the people of all religions, of all spiritual thought, chasing a box. That's right. So, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give I'm gonna give the uh, small person, small small version of it. Now, and it, and and I'm I'm gonna show you. Just by using just by using that title, Ark of the Covenant. Now, remember, in the beginning, I had everybody write down the geometric symbol of the feminine, right? Right. The the geometric symbol of the feminine energy is a circle, a curve, or an arc. So we understand the definition of covenant is an agreement or contract, right? Yeah. So now when you read from east to west, from right to left, when you read the Ark of the Covenant from right to left, you get a contract or an agreement with that arc that arc represents that curve that arc is the feminine energy okay we have to see that this has been laid out for us with such beautiful precision that again that star knowledge that has been given us through Akita and Nasi. Akita. Yes, sir. Um, can you uh, pull up that Stella, the ancient Stella? Of Ankaf Nakansu. Oh, yes. yes. Um, one second. Again, brethren. Ark of the Covenant, a contract with the feminine energy. Let me see if I got this it. This is, uh, and and this is the Stella of Ankh of the Kansu. That verifies that. 
Bear with me, brother. I got to find it. Um, okay, as, as, as you as you look for that, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to keep going. Okay, so. All right, go ahead. I, I, when I get it, I'll let you, I, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. 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 Now, as uh, Eta is looking for the um, ancient Stella, we're going to go to Amos, the fifth chapter. verse 8 <clears throat> and again this is this is for the brothers who are the brothers on this call who are gods who create who are going to bring forth beautiful splendid things from their mind that's the branch But you have to align yourself. We're going to go to Amos, the fifth chapter, reading the eighth verse. Listen, brethren. Seek him who maketh the seven stars and Orion. <laughs> Seek him. Who make it the seven stars and Orion? Seek that knowledge. Seek that star knowledge. Align yourself up with your chakras. Activate Orion within you, which is that third eye. And when you do that, when you seek him, who maketh the seven stars and Orion and turneth the shadow of death into mourning. Don't we have a greater understanding of death now? Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. And maketh the day dark, which night who calleth for the waters. There's that, there's that feminine energy. There's the sister. of the sea and pour them out onto the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. I got it. Whose brother. name? Okay. There it is. Look at the middle picture. Look at the ark. Yes. Who is that ark? Etai? Divine feminine. That is that's, a, that's, that's newt. newt. That's newt. Absolutely. Brethren, that's the covenant we have. That's who we have to make a covenant with. That feminine energy within ourselves. That's the ark. And going back to Amos, the fifth chapter, the eighth verse, check this out. Using the numbers, five and eight is 13. 13 is one plus three equals four. Four represents a foundation for rep represents again the four elements four also represents four corners of a square a square in hieroglyphs is space constellation and the cosmos Okay. Got to see this, brethren. We are locked in to this star knowledge. 
that has been given to us through the two pillars. Akita. Okay. Nasika Haron. Yes, yes, yes. So in closing, now we now we're going to identify the son of man in the organic reality. The son of man in the organic reality is Hapi Ankh, the bull and the serpent. What color, what color is a bull in the Western Hemisphere? <laughs> Copper. What did I just share? What the arc represents? The feminine energy. The horns on the bull represents the feminine energy. The bull represents the male. That's why they call him a bull, not a cow. The male. The physical world, the serpent with the circle around it, could be moon or sun. The serpent represents star knowledge, the feminine energy to its fullness, its wholeness star knowledge the bull represents the balanced man didn't didn't they used to say you couldn't walk a bull through a china you know a china store <laughs> without china. knocking stuff down right you know what i'm saying again throwing us off the bull represents the balanced man the bull represents Again, happy unk, which who we are on this call. We are that balanced man. If we are not this balanced man, we would not be on these calls, period. So I will close and end as I came with humility and wholeness and oneness in Ubuntu to the family. Toda. <laughs>